Hello. Welcome to this relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. My name is Jason Newland and please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And as I speak to you, I have a little ferret lying on my lap, staring at me weirdly. And he's got his tongue out, so he's happy. He's got that like little blissful look on his face. You're feeling happy, aren't you? Yeah. And you may wonder why I'm telling you this. Well, it's not going to be for everybody. And don't worry, I'm not going to recommend getting yourself a ferret. But having a pet can help with anxiety, stress panic and all that stuff having could be a dog could be a cat I mean there's the different obviously there's different kinds of pets you know there's some people have like, reptiles and uh, you know different kinds of things or maybe um, crickets or I had a friend who had a stick insect. Um, so there's the focus of attention that you give on looking after a little animal. Maybe it's a little gerbil or a little mouse or a rat or, you know, whatever. I personally... I like having Andre, my ferret, because of his personality and because he's a little rascal. And he's always, well, he's naughty sometimes. Right now he's fallen asleep in my arms. So, but it's that, having that communication having that connection which I don't think I could ever have with a goldfish but I've got it with him with Andre so it's about finding the pet or companion or family member because they do that's what they become I mean he is my son that can actually change your life in a positive way they can also be a pain in the ass as well but so can humans so there's that, that kind of the twofold aspect I think there's the, the commitment having to get out of bed having to you know take if it's a dog having to take the dog for a walk if you own a, a horse you have to go and you know clean out the horse's stable you know perhaps every day if it's a cat you've got to clean the cat tray out and of course all animals need to be fed Put him down. Hopefully, he'll behave. Are you going to behave, Andre? And the other side of it is the emotional side. The the connection. The and it could be even a case of it could be. You could say it's a distraction. But it's a nice distraction. So when I'm cuddling him, or playing with him, 
or fighting with him, whatever he wants to be doing, because he likes me to chase him and he likes to chase me and stuff like that. But right now he's trying to play with me, so he's biting my hand, not hard, but he wants me to get all rough with him and pull him around so he can be rough with me. And he loves that, he's, that he really enjoys it. Because the rougher I am with him, that gives him permission to bite me harder. <laughs> but I don't want to give him permission to do that because it hurts. But he never does it to hurt me, it really is just playing. And it's a distraction. And admittedly, ow, I shouldn't really be doing it while I'm making a recording. It just happens that he followed me into the bedroom. I've been waiting for him to go to bed, go to sleep. And he's followed me in here. So I thought I'd talk about him. And I'll tell you what, how it's benefited me. So this is, it's, I can only be from my experience, my personal experience of uh, connecting anxiety. I shouldn't, I, I, I stopped saying the words anxiety, stress and panic because we all know what these recordings are about but um, the benefit one of the main benefits for him or how he is now attacking my feet he wants me to chase him one of the things I've really noticed about him about my my behaviour changes uh, my reactions change so I'll give you a really big example and it's big for me it might not be big for you but I would not talk to a stranger in the street generally if someone asked me a question I'd, I'd stop and I'd you know give them directions but quite often I'd I'd hope not to be stopped and I definitely wouldn't have a conversation with someone at a bus stop or waiting for a train or in a pub or anything like that I just never that that is uh, has been stress inducing for me I've always felt uh, the anxiety there and then perhaps the anxiety of that happening so being out in public and it's kind of prevented me from going out as much as perhaps I would. But once I got Andre, four years ago, it's be four years ago next month, when I'm out, I will stop and talk to people because people, not everybody, but quite a few people uh, want to say hello to him or kind of ask me about him because I take him out for walks every day and I don't feel even the slightest bit anxious or stressful when I'm with him and it's not like I've got this big massive scary dog which means I can feel safe because he's a tiny little ferret so it's not a physical safety I seem to get an emotional safety from him or a feeling of emotional safety which means that anxiety and stress can't even arise you can't they can't live in the same place emotional safety and anxiety the, I think it's uh, they can't live together they don't you know it's a bit like I suppose a rain and a drought you know, the two opposite things. 
and he I was going to say marriage and happiness but I'm only joking about that so he and it's not him is it it's not him that's making me feel that way because nobody can make anyone feel anyway all that is is just being reactive and that's that's not a, an enjoyable lifestyle being reactive living as a reactive person all the time reacting to outside experiences and the environment it's not to say that we're not affected by stuff because we're human so I thought what is it about me having this little ferret that changes and pretty much completely diminishes any anxiety or stress in me when I'm in public and not just when I'm in public but when people that I don't know are talking to me I can stand there and talk and feel relaxed and laugh and feel completely at ease I'm talking completely at ease not even a part of me is uh, got any anxiety or stress when I got him in my arms or even he's on the floor walking but the only the only thing I'm kind of had any concern is just to make sure that he is safe so if there's dogs around I kind of like grab him up because he likes to bite dogs and but even then it's not it's not something I'm concerned or something I'm cons- maybe a little bit concerned but not worried just it's the same as looking before crossing the road I'm not worried or stressed that I'm going to get hit by a car I look before I cross the road because I've got a brain and I know that that's what I need to do in order to get across the road safely because once you look before you cross the road it means you don't have to worry or be stressed about getting hit by the car it's only if you walk across the road without looking then there's a reason to be worried because you can only do that so many times before a car does hit you obviously unless you live on you know it's a private road and no one ever goes on it but I've got this little ferret and maybe this isn't just for people that don't have a pet and thinking maybe consider getting one because that's not my it's not really my position to sort of advise someone to get a pet I'm not going to advise anyone to do that but I can tell you about my experience uh, regarding um the benefits that I have found with having Andre the ferret in my life of course there's always going to be downsides to having a pet you know as far as if you've got a dog you know it's the responsibility going away holidays leaving it there is it going to bark and disturb the neighbours things like that So I don't have to worry about stuff like that with Andre because he doesn't bark because he's not a dog. He can go like that but it's not going to be heard by anyone really. Well he does scratch at the front door sometimes trying to get out. I think the neighbours have heard that but I 
just say it's uh, no, I don't say anything I was going to say something weird but yes they, they know it's him they might think it's, it's me trying to get out but uh, nice Jason is drunk again weird because I don't drink and I there's those obvious things you know those things that might not fit everybody not might not fit everybody's lifestyle so if you're traveling around a lot then having a pet might not be ideal but then you gain you might have someone that you can trust to come and feed your cats or your dog or look after your animals so just ignoring all that side of it that's the practical side that only you know about because it's your life the emotional side of having a pet and this is the first time I've really had a, my own pet my own I don't class them as a pet but you know my own animal living in the home I've lived with dogs and cats over the years but they've always been uh, the cats or dogs of the owner of the property and I've just been a lodger so I've never had that deep connection that I have with Andre and it really helps sometimes one thing I don't feel alone with him I really I mean it's occasionally I feel a bit lonely just you know as a human being sometimes it's very very rare and I'm quite a solitary person anyway but having him I talk to him I have to clean up after him I've got to feed him I've got to I play with him and he's got all his toys all over the place he's basically I'm his lodger in this flat in this apartment he's, I'm his lodger and he runs the place this is his territory and I wouldn't have it any other way this is a great way to live for me it's not for everybody but for me it's you know, having him here is improves my life and I think if I'd have had him 2003 2004 when I was at the height of the panic I might not have got to that height I might not it might not have got that extreme there's no way of knowing, I know that. But I really notice how he offers quite a few different ways to move from stress to to relaxation or to humour. Because, you know, sometimes I'll feel a bit stressed or maybe angry. It can be various different emotions. And he'll start jumping around and rolling around on his back and it makes me laugh. Or sometimes he'll jump on me, jump up on my leg, I'll be on the chair, he'll jump up, bite my finger and run off. And then look back, waiting for me to chase him. And it's just, it's funny. He's, I say bite, it's not proper biting. And... I realise this could sound like a recording of me just talking about Andre which I suppose in some ways it is but I'm trying to describe my experience of the benefits otherwise I'd just be talking about Andre and all the things he gets up to and you know how long I've had him and but I'm not. I'm trying to focus it on how I feel when I'm with him. And there's another feeling I have. That feeling of protection towards him 
gives me a sense of safety. And it might seem a bit strange and it, it feels a little bit strange to me. I've given it a lot of thought over a few years. I still don't really understand it completely. I kind of do, of do but I know that I would protect him because he's so little and vulnerable, you know, compared to the dogs that are around because they're, you know, so much bigger than he is and humans and stuff that I, I just feel, I suppose my attention is not focused on myself. My, you know, I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I'm not thinking about, um, and when I say I'm not feeling sorry for myself, I'm not being judgmental about feeling people that feel sorry for themselves because we all do it at some time. Every single one of us feels sorry for ourselves. And it's, a, it's, it's not a pleasant thing to hear, I know that can be annoying to hear someone says are oh, you feeling sorry for yourself again it's quite um it's a bit of a it can sound like a put down like a like you're someone's making fun of you but i don't mean it in that way i mean it in a just a literal way we all feel sorry for ourselves sometimes for a damn good reason other times just because maybe we've lost track of reality and we're not you know of what it is we're kind of a bit too stuck in the past maybe or when maybe not seeing the positive not seeing just seeing what is and what has been not what can be or maybe we're just being self-indulgent which I've spent a long time in my life doing that feeling sorry for myself feeling like a victim thing is a lot of people that feel like victims they kind of once were victims of a situation when does someone stop being a victim and that's where it kind of comes you know that's probably a different conversation and I don't have the answer to that because the word victim is both a not positive but a a respected term and another one which is a, a like a a disrespected term so someone that's been a victim of a, a terrible crime it's a respected term and people respect what's happened and they possibly want to help and they see that it's you know just wish the person well and all that stuff the human natural reaction to terrible things that happen but then there's the other word the other exactly the same word but you're just being a victim victim mentality so it's uh, some people that think of themselves as a victim it's just purely can be a case of they just need to blame other people for how they feel when maybe I think it's I think someone and it's a, just a guess someone that feels that other people to, are to blame for how they feel in their mind that's the only two options is to blame someone else or blame themselves and they can't face blaming themselves but why should they have to blame themselves? Why does blame have to come into it at all? Responsibility, but that's different to blame and guilt. Because I don't think people that blame themselves for stuff are any happier than people that blame other people for their problems. 
I don't think there's uh, happiness in either of those extreme situations. So someone can think of themselves as a victim on that, you know, that really general level of, oh, this always happens to me. Anything, any bit of happiness happens, always goes, and oh, everyone's trying to stress me out, and you know, blah, 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 blah. or the other side of someone just being really horrible to themselves. Oh, I'm to blame for that, and even to the extent of blaming themselves for what happens to others, which is something that I used to do when I was a kid. If I saw someone fall over or uh, have an accident, I used to think it was me. It was my, my, um, it was me that did it. I caused it. When I was young. And most of the time, most of the time it wasn't me. So, but it took a while to realise that. But that might have just been from years of being told that things were my fault. So, again, it's a very complicated uh, subject, really. Bringing it back to the little ferret that I've got is that safety that I feel uh, that confidence that I feel with him I don't really feel when I'm on my own and I don't have to do anything to feel it when I'm with him it just naturally happens I naturally feel relaxed I'm not saying I'm always relaxed every time I take him for a walk because sometimes he does things that annoy me and I get stressed with him so but that's a different situation you know if he just runs out in the road and I you know and I just manage to catch him before he runs off or does something like that you know I'll I'll get upset internally and but there's a reason for that that's a, a quite a legitimate reason if uh, he nearly gets run over or he he does something that could cause himself harm but he doesn't know it because he's he doesn't he's not aware of the dangers but I don't shout at him or anything like that because that's ridiculous if you want to see people shouting just go to a supermarket people shouting at their kids expecting their two year old to actually comprehend what the adult's saying and you can actually see the adult turning and regressing into a two year old so it's actually the adult that's the child in that situation quite funny to watch well it's not funny when you think about the child but so I just kind of I would advise, not advise, I would say that there may be, there may be a way for you to change how you feel when you're out, when you're in a social place, a public place. And I know there's probably, well there is, there's, there's hundreds of books that will give you advice and stuff. I try and talk just from my own experience because I find that is, that seems to be more legitimate, more genuine. Um, because a lot of books, they just regurgitate the same stuff that that author has read somewhere else. It's a bit like if you if you want to study hypnosis and you read the introduction to like an introduction book on hypnosis and they'll all say the same thing. They just like reword it a little bit different. So I try and talk from my own experience and another thing 
It's not related. It's not related to a uh, ferret, but I got myself some headphones, and they they are hands free, uh, you know, wireless, so they sort of connect to my phone uh, via is it Bluetooth? Yeah. So now I listen to not always music. Some I like to listen to motivational speakers like Bob Proctor or Jim Rohn Zig Ziglar and a few others and Dan Piana is another one but he's he's a bit harsh but he's still quite funny and well I listen to music and and it changes how I feel when I'm on the bus or waiting for the bus um, I suppose there's the degree you know uh, distraction I suppose is there but there's the drowning out of talking other people talking and, and if um You know, sometimes I'll be honest. Sometimes I'll be, I'll be at home. I hear people talking, laughing. I sometimes think they're laughing at me, and I guess that's a natural thing. But it may be a degree of paranoia. But it's who knows. You know, it's some people are just some people can be quite rude in on public transport. So to be able to just drown them out with a little bit of sound I don't have it blaring out because I don't want to disturb other people on the bus but just enough so I can hear it and I've still got my visual I can still look out the window I can still if someone started talking to me I'd still hear them but it gives me something to concentrate on me something to focus on and my stress levels really reduce a lot and I've got this new little thing that I do I listen and of course this is all down to personal taste as I'm walking to the bus stop um, I listen to an ELO to the electric light electric light orchestra and um, I forget the name of the song but it's that one there the best songs and it's really really upbeat and I listen to that and I think it's in um, it's in a movie a Marvel movie uh, it's not Saviors of the Universe Guardians of the Galaxy that's it similar title isn't it Guardians of the Galaxy 2 it's played at the beginning of that and it's like really really great tune and I listen to that every time I go to get the bus or maybe walk to the garage or it's usually if I'm not with Andre if I'm with Andre I don't wear I don't listen to music Um well, I don't need to as far as being relaxed because I feel relaxed when I'm with him if there's no one around sometimes I have a little sing song because I've got a park and I don't do it when there's people around but I feel relaxed I feel at ease um, a sense of comfort it's, it's almost like I've gone out in my slippers and my pyjamas but I haven't but there's that feeling of comfort that I have when I've got him with me and uh, yeah so I thought I'd just mention this because other people may other people listening to this may have a dog or a cat or uh, any you know kind of animal that they can give attention to maybe take out for walks or even if you've got an animal that doesn't want to go for a walk maybe carry it around the block 
you know I, I sometimes I carry Andre he can't be bothered to walk and I carry him nearly the whole journey and he's happy just to, just to lay there in my arms looking around having a little sniff and just enjoying the breeze on his face and he sometimes he's happy just to be for me to carry him other times he wants to get out wants to get off onto the floor and roll around in the grass and everything so it's you know it's, it's kind of for different people one it could be for someone that's already got maybe a dog or a pet that you could take out but maybe you could do more of that maybe get more in touch with that feeling that you have and just wondering if it's a similar kind of feeling to the one that I've explained as if I've explained it correctly you know in a, in a way for you to understand but do you have what kind of feelings do you have when you take your your dog out for a walk for example what kind of feelings of relaxation and calmness do you have and can you take advantage of that can you experience more of that and you know maybe just having a picture of your dog or your cat or your gerbil or maybe your goldfish you might have tropical fish or your lizard or whatever um, having a picture on your phone to look at so maybe you're you know on a train or in a public place um, perhaps you know you're in a situation where you could do with a, you know, a little a little boost of relaxation a little boost of calmness and you look at your phone look at the picture I do that with Andre he's my He's on my phone. He's basically the screensaver on my phone. And I look at his little furry face. And I get a little... Get a, a feeling of... Of comfort. You know? Feeling of love. Feeling of... Sort of... Oh, looking forward to going home and seeing... Seeing him and... I wonder what naughtiness he's been up to today. And it gives me a little smile. Either internally or even externally. You know, sometimes I will smile. Sometimes I just feel the smile inside me. And it feels relaxing. And for those that don't have a pet, you know, it's, maybe it's worth considering. But that has to be, you know, it's, it's a commitment. So has to be completely up to you what you choose to do but for me and I'm sure many people it's life changing and it's there's this whole we don't really have the term in England an emotional um, pet or an emotional assistant dog I mean, it kind of is here, but it isn't. In America, it is. You know, you can actually, in the same way of like guide dogs for the blind, you can walk into public places, supermarket, well, anywhere really, if you've got a, a guide dog. But emotional pets, although they're not really recognised so much in England and possibly many other countries, doesn't stop them from being emotional pets emotional um, helping you with your emotional stability helping with keeping you calm and relaxed and you know maybe even if you don't have your own dog maybe you've got a neighbour that has a dog or a friend or someone close by and you could maybe take that dog for a walk maybe you've got an elderly relative or an elderly neighbour and 
you can just offer to take the dog for a walk every day. And, you know, yeah, just notice how relaxed you feel. Apparently one of the most relaxing therapeutic things um, is looking after horses like stroking a horse and spending time with a horse I've never done it and I don't live anywhere near where there's any horses um, there was some near me but they moved out they weren't they didn't live downstairs they weren't a neighbour but they they were in a field but they they're gone now so they're not there now Apparently, you know, that's a really therapeutic activity to spend time with horses because they are, well, ultimately, they are very majestic, calm, beautiful animals. You could say that about any animal, really. I mean, some people, I know a lot of people think animals are just dumb, dogs dumb and all that stuff, but I think that animals have got something that humans could benefit from. You know, that, that ability to relax. Nearly every animal that I've ever seen has the ability just to go to sleep, to relax, to to know what they want when they want it to know when they're hungry to know when they want to play but also to be able to just go to sleep and relax and it almost looks like cats are meditating very peaceful the same as with like a pigeon some of the pigeons sort of sitting in a tree just sitting there calm so I'll leave you with those thoughts Andre stimulated my brain to uh, to do this today you know, just I don't know I just thought it might be useful, a useful thing to talk about. But also it opens up the creative side of your mind to like think, ah, oh, well I don't want a ferret, but what if I did this? Well, I'm not going to get a dog, but what about or it could be well what things have stimulated you to feel completely relaxed and calm in the past and how come I'm not doing that anymore why don't I do more of the things that I know help and that might be jogging going to the gym going and watching a movie collecting stamps train spotting it could be anything painting cooking something that actually you enjoy doing so it doesn't have to be a ferret Obviously, it doesn't have to be anything. There are no rules because we're all different. We all, we all need different things and it's about listening to yourself for what you need and what you can benefit from. So I'm going to leave you um, what a wonderful treat. You've had two recordings in two days. 
I normally don't do them quite so close together, but I was inspired by my little furry friend to talk about the benefits that I have felt in a sense of stress reduction and anxiety. Well, to be fair, when I'm with him, anxiety elimination, completely zero anxiety when I when I take him out. I mean, sometimes I do have to wake him up and for a cuddle because I need I need to do that in order to sort of calm down and to reduce my stress or you know basically so that I can feel better it doesn't happen very often and he doesn't always want me to do it because if he's asleep he doesn't like to be disturbed but I don't kind of try and play with him or get him to run around I just give him a cuddle and he can just sleep but just looking at him just watching his little belly rise as he breathes seeing his face contented knowing that he feels safe actually helps me to feel safe and that's the thing when it comes to panic attacks, anxiety attacks you can't have them if you feel safe because anyone that has panic attacks in that moment you don't feel safe it's impossible to have both at the same time so if you're feeling safe the panic attacks won't happen in that moment so it isn't doesn't it make sense to embrace and increase those experiences of safety or the, the experiences of feeling safe because it's all about how you feel feeling safe is one of the antidotes to anxiety and stress so I'm going to leave you on that and I wish you a wonderful week ahead or however long it is before I make a new recording uh, the website I've got is stressanxietyhypnosis.com I think um, and that's it I shall speak to you next time and thank you to everyone for supporting this podcast for listening and hopefully benefiting see you soon lots of love bye